Less than one week ago, the FDA approved the nation's first COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use authorization. Fast forward to today, and vaccinations are beginning to take place near and far. Over 1,100 doses are being delivered now to Rochester, with more on the way in the very near future. All this said, the pandemic is not over. Far from it. The distribution effort will be historic in its scale and speed, and many of you have questions about the plan and the vaccine itself. Well, tonight, we are joined by two experts who can help answer those questions and more. They are Dr. Emil Lesho and Dr. Mary Rose Lagiovilo. Both are infectious disease experts with Rochester Regional Health. Thank you both so much for being with us. You're welcome. We're going to start with Dr. Lagio Vila, and this is more of a reaction I'm asking for instead of an answer. It was in March we got our first cases here in the Rochester area of COVID-19. Fast forward nine months, and we are seeing people get vaccinated. What do you think about that? I think it is such a testament to what an exciting time we have right now. It is so amazing and unprecedented how quickly we have learned about this virus. We have, as a scientific community globally, designed a very specific and effective vaccine. And knowing now that the vaccine is coming to fruition is extremely uh, exciting and a glimmer of hope. Thank you so much. Thank and you Dr. So much. Dr. 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 Lesho, we had people involved in this, experts involved in this in the Rochester area. What kind of work has gone into what we're seeing now, not just in Western New York, but across the globe? <clears throat> well, as you mentioned, uh, we have a lot of local expertise uh, uh, here present, including at, at Rochester Regional and through collaborations at the University of Rochester. So a tremendous amount of work has gone into it. Um, both locally and globally, as you mentioned, starting, starting with uh, soon after the emergence of this novel pathogen. Uh, what happened at that point was uh, through a global crowdsourcing effort, uh, the genetic makeup of this organism was quickly determined and shared. And that was what we call the whole genome sequence. So the entire sequence of its genetic makeup. That was determined quickly and shared with the entire global community. That provided the foundation for the vaccines that we are delivering now, this, this technology called messenger RNA. Messenger RNA, and I want to dive into that before we get going on some of the larger questions with Dr. Lagio Vila. When we hear about mRNA or messenger RNA vaccines, what are we talking about here? So uh, mRNA are the molecules that we use inside of our cells to communicate what proteins to make. And they're used for a variety of messages. But in this particular instance, the mRNA contains the information so that when you receive the vaccine, your cells will create the protein of the, the spike protein of the virus. So the spike protein, we've all seen the ball of the virus with the little spikes on it. Those spike proteins are what the virus uses to attach to the human cells and get inside. So by us making, us receiving the vaccine, it makes, it uses our cells machinery to make that spike protein, which does not make us sick, just for clarity. But then it, those proteins stimulate the, the recipient's immune system to make antibodies that are very specific to that spike protein. So if I get the vaccine, my cells will, will see that mRNA, make some spike protein. And the, by the way, that mRNA is degraded after a couple of days, it's very, very quick. But the proteins my cells will make will stimulate my immune system. So I have antibodies against that spike protein such that if I am exposed to COVID, then my body is already primed with the antibodies to block these new COVID variants from attaching to my cells and causing infection. We're going to talk about how long that lasts and all that in a bit. But Dr. Lesho, real quick, I wanted to follow up on something you said about how the formula, if you will, was kind of shared amongst the medical community. I think my question here, and I'm asking this out of ignorance, if we have the formula, why aren't we seeing 200 million doses, 300 million doses just made and sent out within the next two weeks? I think that's an excellent question. 
So part of it speaks to, um, unfortunately, as we're seeing with a lot of critical resources uh, that we need to, to fight this pandemic, they're in, short, they're in short supply. So right from the very start, you might remember, we had a shortage of testing reagents and the ability to do tests. That was followed by a shortage of, um, a shortage of a personal protective equipment. Uh, so to some extent, that's a factor here. Um, but it's not completely the answer. Uh, also, we didn't know at first which of the vaccine platforms would, would work. It was, it was unknown. So rather than put all our eggs in one basket, this mRNA basket, we chose to distribute it amongst uh, different platforms. And soon there'll be another platform come out and that's a different, it doesn't involve mRNA. And after that, there'll be a, yet a third and potentially a fourth platform that involve different proteins. But at the time we didn't, so, so right now it just so happens that the, those two, the mRNA, were really, <clears throat> were unexpectedly highly successful. You talk about 95%, uh, maybe not unexpectedly, but surprisingly successful. Uh, but there's only so many manufacturing plants for that, and there's only so many drug companies for that. So that's uh, uh, one of the main reasons for the bottleneck now. But soon, well, by, by soon, by the spring, uh, the first quarter, um, you know, worldwide, there should be the ability to produce the millions of vaccine doses that you're talking about. All right. Thank you so much for clarifying that, Dr. Lesho. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the distribution here in our area, along with safety. Stay with us. At MarinaAutoGroup.com, you have a 99% chance of getting approved with no impact to your credit. So grab your phone, go to MarinaAutoGroup.com, fill out some basic info, and get yourself approved. Go to MarinaAutoGroup.com. time for giving to your friends your family to your teacher in that spirit of giving chevy's proud to give our employee discount to everyone the chevy price you pay is what we pay not a cent more because giving and giving back is what the holidays are all about current qualified competitive lessees can use the chevy employee discount for everyone to get this equinox for around 149 a month get the chevy employee discount for everyone today did you know that Geico's whole 15 minutes thing, <laughs> that came from me. Really, my first idea was in one quarter of an hour, your savings will tower uh, over you, figuratively speaking. But that's not catchy, is it? It's not going to swim about in your brain. So I thought, what about 15 minutes, 15%? Serendipity. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. At MarinaAutoGroup.com, you have a 99% chance of getting approved with no impact to your credit. So grab your phone, go to MarinaAutoGroup.com, fill out some basic info, and get yourself approved. Go to MarinaAutoGroup.com. We develop film, scan prints, slides, and video transfer. Scott's Photo by Roe. Welcome back to our Facts First Coronavirus Town Hall. We're going to direct the first question of this segment to Dr. Elagio Vila. I had a viewer reach out to me recently saying the vaccine is great for those who can take it, but she said she has a child who's compromised and might not be able to take the vaccine. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, but also when we got into dialogue, I was wondering, well, if enough people take the vaccine, Will it be good for those who can't? And that leads to the question of can those who have the vaccine spread COVID-19? So I'm packing a lot in there for you, but we'll start with the first part about those who may not be able to take it. No, I, I think that's a very important question. And I think that question applies to everyone. So as similar to other vaccines, there are 
sensitive groups of people who are ineligible to take it, whether they have had a serious side effect or an allergy to a vaccine before, or they have uh, immunocompromising conditions in which it is not advised for them to take a particular kind of vaccine. So in knowing that this may also apply to the COVID vaccine, it, I think it should reinforce that, well, We've learned a lot about how to control the transmission of COVID and vaccination is only one uh, piece of the puzzle to get out of this. So I think it should be stressed that particularly for those who can take the vaccine, it not only protects you, but it protects others such as that caller's child who can't take the vaccine. It's not only about protecting you, it's about protecting others in the community. And so I guess that gets to that second part. Does it limit the ability for someone to spread the virus if they are vaccinated? You know, at this time, we don't know yet. We are still evaluating that. And then the reason we don't know yet is because they're still very new. So because the first vaccine recipients have received them as early as June, July, we only have about six months of data moving forward. So imagine back here in Rochester in June when numbers were very low, we couldn't really get a sense of protection or transmission from vaccine recipients at that time. And only now we're going through the surge. But we hope moving forward, because the follow-up for these vaccine studies is usually on the order of two years, we'll be able to gain that kind of information. But I don't think we have an answer right now, but that's certainly on all of our radars because that would be an inc incredible goal. All right, Dr. Right, Lagio Vila, thank you. Dr. Lesho, you just heard her mention allergies. How concerned should people be when they go to get the vaccine about allergies? A lot less. The short answer is a lot less concerned than previous vaccines. And it's because, well, specifically, I'm talking about the vaccines that are coming out now, this, these, were, these mRNA vaccines, because it's a whole new paradigm. It's a set of instructions that's going into your body. It's not a live virus, it's not a protein. It's just an set of instructions to tell your body to make the antibodies that Dr. Lagio Vila mentioned. And so in, in the recommendations from the, 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 the expert committee, um, it's called the ACIP and from other agencies called the CDC, the recommendation is that proceed with vaccination if you have a history of severe allergies to foodstuffs, to the usual stuff that people worry about, peanuts, mm -hmm. eggs, uh, shellfish, uh, pollen, uh, insect bites, because none of that is relevant in terms of this vaccine. There's none of that in the vaccine. Additionally, there's no, there's no uh, thimerosal and there's no mercury in these vaccines either. Um, then. The, the, the precaution, and, and they, they make this distinction, they call it a precaution and not a contraindication. A precaution is for people that had anaphylaxis, that's the most severe type of allergy reaction where your throat closes and you can't breathe and you take the EpiPen for. People that have anaphylaxis to an injectable uh, you know, product uh, or a previous injection, they should proceed with caution, but it's not an absolute contraindication because as you mentioned in your, in your introduction about you know so many people are getting sick and so many people are dying. So the risk of not getting vaccinated is far higher than any risk of side effect. Dr. Lesho, thank you. When we come back, we're gonna talk about some of the misinformation that's out there when it comes to this vaccine. We'll be right back. News 8 sponsored by Salino Law. Hey, there he is, Mr. Can Do. He actually calls you that. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a nickname guy. Sandman! That's gonna stick, you watch. That's not how I work. It's called playing the game. Force totally agrees with me, don't you? You said you were on my side with this. You both make a lot of good points. Oh, come on! It's like I have no backbone. Why would you say that? You have a backbone. Okay, I'm sorry, I have a backbone. A new unicorn, Thursday on CBS, or watch on demand or stream anytime. The holidays are a time for giving. To your friends. Your family. To your teachers. In that spirit of giving, Chevy's proud to give our employee a discount to everyone. The Chevy price you pay is what we pay. 
Not a cent more. Because giving and giving back is what the holidays are all about. Current qualified competitive lessees can use the Chevy Employee Discount for Everyone to get this traverse all-wheel drive for around $269 a month. See your Rochester area Chevy dealers. The preparation. The anticipation. The holiday cheer. Whether you're creating new traditions or rekindling warm holiday memories, at Topps Friendly Markets, we want to help your family make this Christmas one to remember with the best and most delicious deals in town. For everything you need to create a magical and merry Christmas, make the holidays with Topps. Nothing beats the fun of new technology during the holidays. And nothing has more fun technology than a new Hyundai. With magical features like available blind spot view monitor and wireless device charging. And with the savings of Hyundai Holidays, now you can get one for yourself. Hyundai Holidays. The longer you look, the more there is to like. For a limited time, lease a 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe for $199 a month. Or get up to $42.50 in total savings. Offers end soon. I'm Greg and this is my wife Ivana. Our passion is traveling and seeing the country together. And for that, you need good hearing. I really didn't know that I needed hearing aids until my family told me I did. I checked my options and I found that hard hearing gave me exactly what I needed with no pressure. I love hard hearing, but my family really loves hard hearing. You love what you hear at heart. Hearing centers. Come home to make up. Welcome back to our town hall. The next question goes to Dr. Lagio Vila. Doctor, what type of misinformation are you seeing out there when it comes to not just the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines, but all the COVID-19 vaccines? I have to admit, I have no quotes of any particular misinformation. Um, if you have any, feel free to share. I'd say I hear um, some concern questions, honest questions about what our opinion, was my opinion of the vaccine? Would I take the vaccine? Am I worried about allergies or side effects or long-term repercussions? Um, so I don't have any specific misinformation that I could cite, but I think that my response to any of these questions is that I think after everything that we have gone through, it is We've learned so much from our, our medical community and we are all in this together. And if there's anything that we can do to empower each other to stop this pandemic from rising and flattening the curve any little bit way, I would do it. It's literally worth a shot. And then another shot three weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, so some, some worry that's out there is that this happens so quickly and we're hearing from even some local leaders that there's skepticism that the FDA wasn't able or didn't have the time to properly vet this vaccine. Is that true or were they able to run the trials and then examine the trials properly? I think so specific to that, you know, when you put very like-minded um, scientific communities with a unified goal and eliminate um, financial barriers or competition, amazing things can happen. You know, I think in a usual non-pandemic society, uh, we have different research efforts at, that are going at different rates and have different priorities. But because of this, when the NIH decided to make um, a series of vaccine subgroups and collaborate between industry and uh, public health and uh, big institutions like uh, the NIH or the vaccine trials evaluation units like the VTEU, which the U of R participates in, and we've been able to collaborate with as well from Rochester Regional Health, that collaboration really expedites things. And so we had this opportunity to witness uh, a focus and a very aggressive timeline and the ability for multiple sites to 
put their strengths together and recruit thousands of people. I mean, generally with a vaccine study, if it's only a, a handful of sites, they may recruit only a couple hundred, couple thousand. But here you have all of these sites working together, meeting on a regular basis with a aggressive timeline, with a very, very smart and experienced vaccinologists and virologists coming together to analyze the data together, that you have experienced teams who are used to running vaccine units and setting up very strict guidelines and operations to have interested populations come in, have their vaccine, have their scheduled two-week uh, follow-up visit for blood draws to measure responses. I mean, there are a lot of working parts, but particularly I think for this, we had put together all of our like really smartest and most dedicated workforces together on a unified goal. And when you have something like that, you can have very large volumes of data that you can know that could be reliable and you could reflect on. I mean, the stringency of the vaccine studies that are being done is very rigorous, you know, and, and I, I have to say thank you to the Rochester community for such an outpouring of volunteerism. You know, when Drs. Walsh and Falsey had been advertising that we're going to start a vaccine study, there was tremendous support from the community. There were so many people willing to volunteer. And that volunteerism and I think a little bit of a sense of a community and really an interest in science and, and adventure, well, you know, they were dedicated in keeping their visits and keeping their diaries and reporting for side effects each day after their vaccine. Uh, and then also they had these very specific regimens in which they put the information into a data sheet, the data sent to a centralized area. And so it could be analyzed on a very high level. So you have 44,000 patients or individuals who are participating. So we can make solid information and conclusions. Um, and also just the follow-ups, having this structure that if an individual who received a vaccine or placebo participated in the vaccine trials developed COVID, they have follow-up for the vast majority of 44,000 individuals and they know that out of those, it was 170 COVID cases. I mean, it's practically a, 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 almost like a needle in a haystack. And then they know of the people who got placebo and then who got vaccine, 95% of them were in the placebo trial. I'm sorry, no, that's, that's not, I, I, have, I have better numbers. Uh, 162 of them were in the placebo group. Eight were in the, the, the vaccine group. So it shows 95% efficacy. That was where I got the 95. Yeah. So I yeah. think as we have all of these groups working together internationally to put all of this data together, one, you can have very rapid timeline because of these concerted efforts and then valuable, reliable data to get confident conclusions from. Impressive when you lay it all out like that. Thank you so much. When we come back, we're going to talk about the timeline here in our area when we could reach herd immunity. That's coming up. Love is what brings us here. This holiday season, we'll be celebrating life's little moments and big moments. Moments that bring out the best in us. Finding new ways to come together. Sharing delicious meals and celebrating community and family, all through love. From our family to yours, wishing you a safe and happy holiday from Wegmans. I know this all looks very Hollywood, but guess what? This is a Nissan sales event ad. Sales event ads are usually boring. Is this boring? There's a nice little present. This Sentra has more standard safety features than that 3 Series behind me. What? Did you want a big red bow? Lease Rogue Sport, just $159 per month. Being comfortable in your home is now more important than ever. It's where we come together to relax, recharge, and reflect on yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We love delivering comfort to your home. 
to make your home your happy place. And to help you get your home ready for the holidays, you'll save from 10 to 20% on everything in our stores and online. Find your style and comfort today at Raymore and Flanagan. Dad, we do this every day. When I was your age, we didn't have the all new 2021 Nissan Rogue with snow mode. You know what we had? The occasional Sunday drive, a gravel road here and there. We didn't get to experience the thrill of groundbreaking driving technology on a daily basis like you kids do. The all-new, fiercely reimagined Nissan Rogue. Get a low 219 for a month lease or get 0.9% financing for 36 months on the 2021 Rogue. Bring your unwanted jewelry, diamonds, coins, and collectibles to the Jewelry and Coin Exchange for extra holiday cash. For someone special, you'll also find high-quality jewelry at near wholesale prices. Get more when you sell, pay less when you buy. The Jewelry and Coin Exchange. You need a trusted, committed attorney for workers' comp because the only person on your side is the attorney at your side. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorney. Welcome back to our Facts First Coronavirus Town Hall. We're going to begin with Dr. Lesho. Dr. Lesho, Tracy wrote in to us talking about herd immunity. So this is a two-part question here. One, what percentage of the population has to receive the vaccine before you feel comfortable going back to quote-unquote normal? And then what's the timeline for that? Tracy says she's hearing August in our area, but April, other places. What are your thoughts? Uh, so the, the first part of the question, the answer to that would be at least 70, at ideally more than 80 percent of the entire population to achieve herd immunity. Uh, what what that is for the listen for the viewers that don't know is that's that's an important concept where um, you and it's especially important for people like your previous question for people who cannot get the vaccine, not so much this vaccine, but other vaccines. Um, cannot be given to immunocompromised patients. That's not the case with this vaccine, but that's where herd immunity is critical because by having so many people protected, they're not going to be spreading the vaccine around, and then those, those vulnerable patients on the cancer wards and stuff like that, they're not going to be exposed to these viruses. So at least 70, more, more likely up to 80%, and I would... It depends. It depends on what happens with the ability to produce large quantities of vaccine. It depends on our willingness to take the vaccine once it's available, because vaccines don't do anything, right? The adage goes, vaccinations prevent disease and save lives. So we, we have to get it. We have to have, we have to listen to patients' concerns and others' concerns about why, why are they concerned about this vaccine so we can help educate each other so that they take the vaccine. And I'm guessing at least it's not going to be until the summertime, and that's if everything goes smoothly. But it's, it's very hard to predict, but it's not right around the corner. We're going to still have to socially distance. We're still going to have to wear masks, unfortunately. But it is a light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. When do you think we'll see enough doses of various vaccinations to start to make a difference, to start to approach that normal? Well, like we were saying, probably late spring, early summer, hopefully. Yeah, and it's not just the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine, but you're talking about AstraZeneca and Dr. Lesho, I think you were referencing some some others that might be in the pipeline. There's a couple, there's a few, there's quite a few in the pipeline, uh, right. So I know the ones we just, you just mentioned are the ones most likely to be released first. Uh, there's there's the Johnson & Johnson or the Janssen study or the, the Janssen construct. There's the Sanofi Pasteur construct and there's potentially maybe eight or nine or 10 more that are in the pipeline. Good to hear. Dr. Lesho, thank you. When we come back, we're going to talk about the vaccine and its relationship at this point to children and women who are pregnant. Stay with us. Those answers coming up. After my accident, I was devastated. For you letting help me have peace of mind. We're dealing with real people who've sustained real tragedies, and these people need our help. This settlement allows us to have freedom to be able to do what we want to do with the time we have left. If you've been in an auto accident, you should call Ferrachi Life. 
When you buy or lease your new Mazda from Mazda of West Ridge, you're not just getting an award-winning vehicle from a President's Club Mazda dealer. You're getting our entire team standing behind it. We're with you for any reason, big or small. Count on it. So buy your new Mazda with confidence from Rochester's highest volume Mazda dealer and experience the luxury and style of a new Mazda CX-5 for just $219 a month. Come try something better. Premium brand, premium experience. Move up to Mazda at Mazda of West Ridge. Did you know that automated calls made to your cell phone without your consent is against the law? For every robocall you did not consent to, you're entitled to a minimum of $500 per call. That's right. If you received 100 unwanted robocalls, you could be entitled to up to $50,000 or more. At the law offices of Kenneth Hiller, we do not charge a fee unless we win. Call today to see if you have a case. Rise and shine with Tim Horton's new buttermilk biscuit. Baked in-house daily, soft and warm for a perfect buttery bite. Tim Horton's new buttermilk biscuit. And now get $0 delivery when you order on the Tim Horton's app or online. Do you have dry, cracked hands from constant washing, cold weather, and hard work? Try O'Keefe's Working Hands. It's America's number one selling hand cream for guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked hands. Also available in O'Keefe's for healthy feet. Guaranteed relief for extremely dry, cracked feet. Over time, things wear down. Tires, brakes, and headlight bulbs, too. Sylvania's lighting experts know that if you wait until burnout, you'll lose up to 50 feet of visibility. That's from here to here in darkness. Switch to a new pair of Sylvania bulbs today and see better tonight. Hi, this is Anthony again from Ruler Door. It's working. You helped me get another commercial, so I got you another discount. Call Ruler Door and say you heard me to get 10% off any garage door purchase and installed. Let's keep working together. News 8, sponsored by Raymore and Flanagan. Welcome back to our Coronavirus Town Hall. Dr. Longio Vila, we're going to talk about who is going to be getting this vaccine. We already know that folks who are at high exposure risk within the healthcare system right now are getting it this week, some of them at least. We are hearing perhaps residents or perhaps staff at nursing homes are next. What are you hearing? Yes, so this is according to the New York State recommendations for phases of uh, en enrolling people for the vaccines. Phase 1A was for frontline workers um, because there are certain guiding principles in terms of deciding who would be eligible for a vaccine. And unfortunately, we need to have these guiding principles because there just isn't enough vaccine at this time. Ideally, as vaccine stocks go up, then that's how we'll be able to distribute vaccines more effectively across everybody. But so it's uh, health, frontline healthcare workers and then long-term care uh, residents and workers as well. And then following that will be other essential workers, such as people who whose occupations keep our society going. So grocery stores, uh, food, gas stations, all of these things, uh, energy workers, um, because you know those are important to keep our economy and our society going on. I don't know if you know the answer to this, but Jin did tweet to me today asking, how will an elderly person, or any person for that matter, know when it's their turn? That's an excellent question. I think that is such a smart question. And I, I, I don't know if we have excellent guidance for that at this time, other than I would advise them to contact their primary care physician. I, and I, I defer to Dr. Lesho if he knows more information about this, but my understanding is that for healthcare workers, the distributions are gonna be through their occupational settings, like through the hospitals and through the healthcare systems. But as it gets distributed more to people outside of the healthcare systems, they're looking into uh, larger uh, pharmacy um, like chains such as CVS or Walgreens to be locations in which to acquire the vaccine. Very good. And Dr. Lesho, I'm going to hand things over to you to see if you have any insight on that. But I'm going to add this. Children and women who are pregnant, where does that stand right now when it comes to the COVID-19 vaccine? Sure. So um, let, let me um, just offer a little more. I think that's an excellent question. If you're an elderly person, when are you going to know? And, uh, you know, that's that highlights the, the very critical role that the media plays. And that, you know, I would encourage them to continue to watch the news, 
so that they, in a, and I'm sure your channel and others will say, okay, vaccines are now available here or go there. Um, I would definitely keep it, you know, keep, keep it tuned that way. Um, and, uh, and we'll continue to, to, to educate. As Dr. Lagi Avila was mentioning, um, the, the delivery to the hospitals and the healthcare systems is highly regulated and highly, highly controlled. The vaccine can't be moved around. But what's happening in the long-term care facilities in a nursing home is being coordinated through the pharmacies, that, that she said. As far as, as far as pediatrics, so right now, the, 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 what's called an emergency use authorization. And what that means is we can start using this vaccine because it's such a critical uh, set of affairs we're in, you know, the number of people dying and stuff like that. That authorization spe specifically says 16 and, 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 and higher. So initially at this point, children uh, under 16 are not going to be included in the vaccine. That said, studies are ongoing and I would expect them uh, to be uh, quickly included. Pregnancy is is it's a little bit easier to answer that question in a health for healthcare workers. So if you're a pregnant healthcare worker, and you're in uh, the top tier groups, the high risk groups for exposure. In other words, let's say you're a uh, emergency room nurse or an emergency room doctor, or we don't we at RGH at least at RRH we don't we don't specify by role. We don't say only the nurses are getting, we, only the doctors are getting it. We do it as, as the setting dictates. So the, the environmental services people get the same consideration as the food services people, as the physician leaders, it goes by unit. So emergency room, top priority, because that's the setting where you can have uncontrolled exposure to unknown, uh, you know, unknown patients of infectiousness. But and safe, so, safe, safe, safe for, safe pregnant, for women? pregnant women. It is. It is so. In that situ, so the 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 formal answer from the agencies is that there is no safety data in pregnant women, because they were not included in these initial trials. That said, professional uh, societies also recommend it for those women uh, that are pregnant that I just mentioned in those settings, and that's why it's a little bit easier. So if you're a healthcare worker that's pregnant in a high risk setting, they say the the, um, the maternal fetal medicine societies and the obstetric societies and the CDC recommends that those women be offered the vaccine and make this make the decision in conjunction with their primary care provider and their obstetrician. Um, so it's probably safe in pregnancy, but again, the, the, the honest and open answer is there's no data. Uh, yeah. All right. Wow. Thank you for the nuance there. Always appreciated, Dr. Lesho. When we come back, you might be looking at all of these, the Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna. Is there a difference? Is there one that you should get or shouldn't? We're going to get that answer for you in just a few minutes. I got a good, good, a good feeling. Yeah, I'm up on the cloud, ain't coming back down. time for giving to your friends your family to your teacher in that spirit of giving chevy's proud to give our employee discount to everyone the chevy price you pay is what we pay not a cent more because giving and giving back is what the holidays are all about current qualified competitive lessees can use the chevy employee discount for everyone to get this tracks for around 139 a month see your rochester area chevy dealers Step into this world of elegance and you'll be saying, ooh la la. Inspiration to happiness surrounds you at La La of Webster Boutique. Build self-confidence with unique and exclusive apparel. Communicate affection with beautiful jewelry and gifts by local artisans. La La of Webster encourages health and wellness with carefully gathered gifts and locally sourced products, including lotions, soaps, essential oils, and natural cleaning products. 
Lala of Webster. You'll look and feel inspired. Vertigo, dizziness, and imbalance affects millions of people. Hard hearing and balance centers can help. Don't let the fear of falling keep you up. Get the balance back in your life. Call Hard Hearing and Balance Centers at 266-4130, 266-4130. The holidays are full of tradition. But it's time they got a technology update with a new Hyundai filled with available features like blind spot cameras and oversized touchscreens. And with the big savings of Hyundai holidays, these are sure to make your holiday. <laughs> Hyundai holidays. The longer you look, the more there is to like. For a limited time, lease a 2020 Hyundai Tucson for $149 a month or get up to $37.50 in total savings. Offers end soon. Thank you. We say a lot of that at Goodwill and mean it. Your donations and purchases fund Goodwill programs and services that have changed over 150,000 lives. Goodwill couldn't do that without you. So thank you. Good deals, good cause, Goodwill. An exceptional event is taking place at Vision Hyundai. The Hyundai Certified Pre-Owned Event. Over 300 Hyundais from $99.95 with zero down are available all with three years free maintenance and the balance of their 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Vision Hyundai! Ridgecoin, the best price for gold and silver for over 40 years. For all your holiday purchases, get the card that rewards you. The ESL Rewards Visa Signature Credit Card earns you bonus points to redeem for cash back and more. Apply online today and receive an immediate response. I know this all looks very Hollywood, but guess what? This is a Nissan sales event ad. Sales event ads are usually boring. Is this boring? There's a nice little present. This Sentra has more standard safety features than that 3 Series behind me. What? Did you want a big red bow? Lee Smoke Sport, just $159 per month. telemedicine these days with easy access to the care you need from mental health support to medical advice so MVP telemedicine is now free for all MVP healthcare members Money a little tight this holiday season? Here's a great solution. Bring your unwanted jewelry, diamonds, coins, and collectibles to the Jewelry and Coin Exchange and get more money. Need a gift for someone special? The Jewelry and Coin Exchange has you covered with high-quality jewelry at near wholesale prices. With a large selection, you're sure to find that perfect gift. This holiday season, go to the Jewelry and Coin Exchange and get more when you sell and pay less when you buy. You'll be glad you did. For all your holiday shopping, get the card that saves you money. The ESL Visa credit card makes it easier with 0% APR for 12 months. Apply online today and receive an immediate response. What you working on? Dungeons and Dragons. You know how I feel about that game. The most wicked thing in it is my sense of humor. Can you at least give me a hug? I can. I want to get the test. You don't look pregnant. That's not how it works, Georgie. I got it. Anybody see you? They're using Italian accent just in case. Please tell me you're joking. Oh, I'm no joking. New Young Sheldon, Thursday on CBS, or watch on demand, or stream anytime. News 8, sponsored by The Barnes Firm. Well, let's get right back to it with our coronavirus town hall. Facts first here. Dr. Lasho, when it comes to the various vaccines that are coming out, is there one that's preferable? Should people worry about which one they're going to get, or should they just go with the first one that's available to them? Well, I have to answer that from an epidemiologist public health pers perspective. And in that sense, it's a lot more uh, direct and easy. Get the first one that's available because any vaccine is far uh, more protective than no vaccine. And, you know, I, I personally have a fear of getting COVID. And, I, and I, think, I think more people need that because the more we experience, you know, and see it, you know, just because, just because you don't die of it doesn't mean you're not gonna have long-term problems as we're seeing in more patients. You hear about these long haulers. I, I have patients that four months later, they're fully recovered, they still can't smell. Or worse yet, 
good things smell awful to them. Uh, we have people with, with all kinds of side effects. So I'd get the first vaccine that's available if it were me. They're all highly effective. All the ones that we know of now, that we, that we, that we hear now. Very good, Dr. Lesho, thank you. Dr. Lagio Vila, speaking of side effects, are there any with the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine that we know of? Yes, and um, we've noticed that uh, they tend to be more after the second dose. Um, and they also tend to happen more often in people who are younger compared to older. The most common side effect of, from the vaccine is fatigue. It can be seen in up to 50% of vaccine recipients. Um, other side effects described or reported are headache or injection site soreness, usually on the order of a third to 40% of people. Um, some people, maybe a quarter, will have a fever. Um, and few, maybe less than 10%, will have nausea or diarrhea. And I think it's important to discuss some of the potential side effects of the vaccine because from what I've listed, you know, there can be overlap with COVID infection. So there are wonderful materials on the CDC website that um, they really articulate well when in terms of timing after your vaccine um, should you suspect it's related to the vaccine versus potentially a new COVID? Um, if it was in the first two to three days and they were only the ones that I reported, nothing respiratory, but maybe fever and fatigue, um, and they didn't last for more than two days, it may be more likely related to the vaccine versus if the fever and fatigue started seven days a week after receiving the vaccine. Well, they're probably more related or they should be suspected as potentially related to a, a COVID infection. So those distinctions in terms of the timing are important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Lagia Vila, thank you. When we come back, we're gonna answer Jonathan's question. He sent a tweet to me asking how long he would be protected by the vaccine, when it might wear off. That's coming up. When you have zero worries and zero stress, there are zero reasons not to get into a Volkswagen. Click, call, or come by today. Visit our Volkswagen sign in drive event and lease the 2020 Jetta S today with zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero due assigning. With Mitsubishi Electric's revolutionary hyperheating systems, you can keep one or every room toasty with lower energy bills and no new ductwork, even when temperatures outside dip to minus 13. So your home will never feel like an icebox. Right, Buster? Good boy. Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating. Make yourself comfortable. Call AirQuip Heating and Air and get up to $4,500 in rebates on a Mitsubishi Electric Multi-Zone System. Next time your Chevy needs service, bring it to Vision Buick. Come on! Make the vision decision. On Panorama Trail. We at Connors and Ferris have been a part of the Buffalo Bills family for 12 years now. Although we will miss gathering together at Bills Stadium for games, we'll always support our team and our Western New York community. Allen fires it now on the run. Touchdown! Touchdown! We'll be right there with you cheering on Sunday and ready to help with your workers' comp attorney needs on Monday. No matter what, we're moving forward together. For 125 years, Volunteers of America has been serving those most in need in our community. During this crisis, we continue to shelter, feed, nurture, and care for those who have nowhere else to turn. We're in this together, and now is the time to help. This holiday season, support local, shop local. There are zero reasons not to get into a Volkswagen. 
especially now that you can start shopping from home. Click, call, or come by today. Visit our Volkswagen sign and drive event and lease the 2020 T1 S4 Motion today with zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero to its signing. Welcome back for the final time here. Dr. Lagio Vila, Jonathan wanted to know if he gets the vaccine, how long would he be protected? Sorry, I'm muted. Um, that's a really good question. And, you know, at this time, as far as we know, we only have data out to six months because the first recipients of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine were just in May and June, right? And they recently were able to publish the results of the Moderna vaccine trial of vaccine recipients 120 days out. So for six months out, they found that the antibody response after vaccine lasted. So that's as far as we know now. Um, we'll have data about Pfizer coming in January. Um, but so far as we can see, it seems to be durable. Now, because we can't predict what's going to happen um, with other respiratory viruses, you know, we've seen that, that there are vaccines such as the flu vaccine where we may need to be vaccinated again each year. So I wish I had more specific information, but I think at least right now we do have data that show that six months after there is a, a durable antibody response. Yeah, very good. Well, impressive all the same. Dr. Lesho, we were talking about herd immunity a few minutes ago, and I have a follow-up question for you. Going into the holidays, Christmas and New Year's, if folks follow the guidelines and we're able to knock down some of these numbers, does that help speed up the timeline at all? I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you mean, uh, no. You know, if, if I understand it correctly, you need you need a you need a durable uh, vaccine induced immunity uh, to, to in everybody or at least as we said in 70 to 80 percent of the people to get to herd immunity. Um, but if you're following the guidelines and you're keeping yourselves and your loved ones safe by not having indoor gatherings by not going to any you know not eating with anybody outside your your household then theoretically you shouldn't be not theoretically, then you won't be getting infected. And so you'll still be, you'll, you'll still not have immunity. Will we have any benefit, I suppose, if I could even use that word, to the fact that so many people in our community have been infected? Do they have antibodies? Does that, in essence, work in conjunction with the vaccine because they've already had it? Well, you know, I, um, so uh, maybe. The most scientifically accurate answer to that, I would think, would be we don't know. So we know we know from some serology studies measuring the uh, you know the immunity in people's blood that people who have had mild infections may not have ha may not have as high levels of protection as people who, for example, had a pretty pretty nasty infection. And we know we know especially in young people a lot of these infections are are milder so we really we really don't know but it's true that natural infection does provide uh, a, a level of immunity but the risk is too high i wouldn't want to that could to be construed as actually what was proposed by <clears throat> by by, by uh, you know one of the uh, government officials in the in you know was to herd immunity go out and get infected that's really dangerous and not a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you both for joining us and for the work that you're doing in the community. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks for helping educate everybody. And, uh, you know, this is an important topic. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Dr. Lesho, Dr. Lagio Vila, both from Rochester Regional Health, a huge thanks once again to them. And thank you for watching this town hall. You can always go back to rochesterfirst.com if you want to watch it again or share it with others.